Okay, as with all vectors questions, we're going to be asked to use scalar product at some point. We've got to find the nearest point one degree the acute angle between L1 and L2. Okay, so so L1, this is to get on the line, this is some direction in the distant direction of the line, so this is the direction vector. And for L2, get on the line plus some distance in the direction of the line, this is the direction vector. The angle between two lines is the angle between the directions they're going in, so we need to form the scalar product of those two things. So it's 5, two, five minus 2, 5 dot minus 1, 2, 1. So this is what I'm calculating here. And that equals minus 5, minus 4, plus 5, which is minus 4. And so we need to... Uh, now we need to... What's what we need to, Oh, we're finding the acute angle, right? So, we, so the acute angle, cosine theta equals minus 4 divided by, now, the size of the first vector, the 5 minus 2, 5 vector, is square root of 5 squared plus minus 2 squared plus 5 squared, which is root 54. And the other vector, minus 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, so root 6. So we need to multiply all that lot, do a bit of a rearrangement, inverse cosine, and we get... 102, so theta equals 102, 1 degree, 102.8. Now we are asked to find the acute angle, so don't lose a daft mark, it's only out of three. Don't lose a mark for not doing this bit. Wherever two lines meet, there will be an acute angle and an obtuse angle. Uh, as you see, where two, two lines meet, there's two different angles. Um, uh, we've found the obtuse angle, the 102 degree one, so to find the other one we simply subtract from 180 and so the answer to part A is um, that the angle equals, I'll call it phi, equals 77.2 degrees. We're now going to be given a point and told its position vector, show that A lies on L1. Well to show that a line lies on, a, such a point lies on a line we've got to show that that's naught one six equals two minus three four plus lambda minus one two one for some value of lambda. And just looking at the x, the top number, so naught equals two plus minus one times lambda. So clearly lambda equals two would make the x coordinates the same. Uh, so so we get that. Uh, the next bit we would um, just, once we found that lambda equals 2, we can now just substitute lambda equals 2 in and see if this equation works. Uh, so without writing anything, I would write it if I was doing an exam, but minus 3 uh, plus 4 would give 1, that's correct, and 4 plus 2 does give 6. So when lambda equals 2, a is on L1, so A is on L1. Write down the coordinates of X, L1 and L2 intersect at the point X. Now, the number of people who don't draw lines, let's say that this is L1, this is L2, A is on L1 somewhere, and X is at the intersection. That's the intersection point there. Now, when they equal, we're looking uh, actually, it's easier than I thought. Uh, and you can see this from that. It's only worth one mark. So, looking at the equations, we've got R is get on the line with 2 minus 3, 4 plus blah, blah, blah. And the other one is R is 2 minus 3, 4 plus blah, blah, blah. They both go through 2 minus 3, 4, so that must be the point X. If it was worth more than that, if it was worth more than that, then we'd have to solve, simulta solve equations 2 plus... Uh, 2 plus lambda times minus 1 equals 2 plus 5 mu, find, and then simultaneous equations, and then make sure it works for the third <coughs> third coordinate. Uh, okay, so that's x. A, I'll just write A on here as being 0, 1, 6. I'll write it as coordinates, I could write it as a position vector if I liked, but it takes up less vertical space there. Now, Find the exact value of the distance AX, so this distance here, AX, so it's the distance between these two coordinates, which by Pythagoras theorem is the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. 
uh, not sure about why I've said that then look at look at the usual way from C1 and find the different distance between two points Distant, difference between the X coordinates is 2 difference between the Y coordinates is 4 difference between the Z coordinates is 2 so that gives us a total of um, root 24 so 2 root 6 is the answer here exact answer so don't do anything daft by writing a decimal uh, don't approximate things now the distinct points distinct means two different points B1 and B2 both lie on L2, looking at the diagram then, uh, they're somewhere on here. Um, given that A to X is the same as X to B1 and X to B2, so that must mean that B1 is here and B2 is here, or the other way around, we don't know. Uh, what we're going to do with that? Um, Find the area of the triangle A, B1, B2. So the area of this triangle here is what we're finding. Okay. Um, right. So what we need to do is half A, B, sine C would be useful. I think we've done a lot of the work here. The angle between these two... These two here is 77.2 and the area of a triangle is half AB sine C. Uh, so the area of... Right, right, this is easier than it might look actually. If I draw this triangle here like that, I'm going to find the area of this first triangle here using half AB sine C. That angle there is 77.2. These two lengths we've just found, it's a, it's a nice oscillation triangle, so it's half uh, AB sine C, they're both root 24 or 2 root 6, so, so they multiply together to make root 24 times root 24 times sine of the angle 77.2. So that's the area of this triangle that I've shaded. Now the other triangle actually is exactly the same, and the reason it's exactly the same is because the base is the same as the base of this one, because XB1 is the same as XB2, and the height must be the same, the perpendicular height is the same, because it's the same point there. So we just want two of those, so it's 24 times sine 77.2, which I reckon is 20. 3.4 Okay, hopefully that's right. Three significant figures. Um, given that the x coordinate of B1 is positive, find the exact coordinates of B1 and the exact coordinates of B2. Okay, right, let me just make some space here. What we know is we know the distance from A to X. Um, we found it earlier as 2 root 6, that's this value here, 2 root 6 from A to X. So it's also 2 root 6 along here and 2 root 6 back along there. So if I draw what we've got, we've got the line L2 and L2 is, just go through this quite slowly, L2 is given by that equation in the original question. The direction vector 5 minus 2, 5 has a distance of root 54, so the um, so the uh, <coughs> excuse me the, the the root 54, yeah that's right. So the normalized vector, the, the the what do you call it, the unit vector is this. Like that. So that's 1 in the distance L2. So L2 has a, the, the 5 minus 2, 5, the dis direction vector has a size of 50, root 54. So the vector I've just written down here, this 5 minus 2, 5 over 54, is in the same direction but only 1 long. We want it to be 2 root 6 long because that's the distance from X to B2. So I need to multiply that by 2 root 6. Uh, now root 54, 9, 6 is a 54, so that's 3 root 6. So the root 6 will cancel the root 6 there, and we want 2 thirds. Um, 
We can also go the other direction, two thirds. So it's either two thirds times five minus two five from x, or minus two thirds times five minus two five um, from x. x we know is two minus three four. So we've got two minus three four plus two thirds of five minus two five. That should give us oh god cool, blimey. Two thirds of five is ten thirds plus two is six thirds, so fifteen thirds that doesn't sound right. So I'll say that and do that again. Two thirds of five is ten thirds plus six thirds is sixteen thirds. So sixteen thirds comma do we need co is that corners? Yeah, sixteen thirds. Uh this is the positive x one. So this is B1. Uh, then 3, then, then, then the next, the y coordinate is minus 3 plus 2 thirds of 2. 2 thirds of 2 is 4 thirds. 4 thirds minus 9 thirds, I think, is minus 5 thirds. And the y coordinate is 4 plus 2 thirds of 5. We've just said 2 thirds of 5 is 10 thirds. 4 is 12 thirds, so 22 thirds. I think that's the point B1. And B2 then is if we subtract the two thirds. So the same distance but just in the opposite direction. Uh, 2 is 6 thirds, so I'm doing the same thing. 2 minus 2 thirds of 5, so 6 thirds minus 10 thirds is minus 4 thirds, comma, uh, 3, sorry, minus 3. And it subtract 2 times 2 thirds, so add 4 thirds. Minus 12 thirds, add 4 thirds, I think is 8 thirds. Hang on. Minus, minus, no, no, it's not 12 thirds. Minus 9 thirds, add 8 thirds is, oh God, what am I on about? Let's have a go at this again. Minus 9 thirds, add uh, 4 thirds is minus 5 thirds. Minus five thirds. Okay, I'll write it. Not, not convinced with my arithmetic. And the z coordinate is four minus two thirds of five. Two thirds of five is ten thirds. This is twelve thirds, so I think that's two thirds. And now I'd spend a bit of time checking to see whether I got that right because it's worth uh, it's worth two marks. Uh, yeah, that looks right.